everyone for joining us. Okay, for joining us this morning. I know it's not easy to get up early on a Sunday, especially when you have migraine, but it's important that we all work together to advocate and raise more awareness about what migraine truly is. I want to thank my incredibly supportive family and friends who continue to be curious and empathetic about migraine. I want to thank my cousin, Oliver. Oliver, you wanna raise your hand? <laughs> um, oh wait, I lost my place. For joining me, he has been by my side for Botox appointments, moments of aphasia and dysarthria, severe head pain, and symptoms that most would deem scary. And he's always completely, brilliantly neutral to them. And he's been able to apply everything he's learned about migraine to now help his mom, who is new to the disease. Can we hear it for Oliver and give him a round of applause? I want to thank my care team and doctors um, and the care team at both NYU and Jefferson who ensure that I get the treatments and medications I need so I can take part in events like this. Thank you for the countless prior authorization battles, peer-to-peers, my chart messages, and sending in prescriptions just in the nick of time. Also a special shout out to my service dog, Charlie. She's still in training. <laughs> Who's the reason I'm able to navigate this triggering, bustling city with independence. She's small, but she's mighty. And finally, I want to thank Botox, Amovig, Namenda, Savella, No Dose Naltrexone, Diamox, Magnesium Glyconate, Cephaly, Gamacor, and of course, Nurtec, without whom I would have not made it this morning. This is the thing I've learned about migraine. It can be complex. And for people like me, it can be really complex. I share all of this because migraine is a lot. Treating migraine is so much more than taking one pill and poof, suddenly feeling fine again. I've learned that living with migraine is living on a really fine balance, akin to a tightrope walker crossing a crocodile-filled river while it's riding a monocycle. Every day I never know what to expect. Will my legs work? Will my hand suddenly become so overwhelmed with paresthesia that I cannot sense what I'm touching? Will my voice be affected by dysarthria? Will I be able to smile? Will there be vertigo? Also, does any of this sound just like a headache? But somehow, thanks to this very fine balance of meds, treatments, neuromodulation devices, meditation, strict schedules, workouts, and excellent friends, family members and care teams, and an incredibly compassionate and understanding employer at NeuroHealth, I'm able to be one of the 37% of those with chronic migraine who are able to work full time. I've learned a few things about being um, formally dosed with, di with chronic migraine almost 10 years ago. People new to chronic migraine need more than a village to support them. There isn't enough compassion or support for those who live with migraine. Headache specialists and supporting care team, whether it's a medical care team, friends, or family members, are worth their weight in gold. Because my migraine disease was not properly treated in the beginning, my migraine became more complicated during my 30s, something that's fairly common for women with migraine. On top of sinus migraine, I collected vestibular migraine. I was so debilitated by my symptoms that I lost my job and was unable to work for several years. Something as simple as going to the grocery store or crossing a crosswalk would trigger vertigo so severe that I could not tell up from down. I had to relearn how to walk down a hall. Several years later, I also developed mums, a little known type of migraine with aura that is dubbed super migraine. My mum's symptoms are quite aggressive and flood my body with neurological effects, difficulty speaking, difficulty walking, weakness on my right side, pins and needles so severe that I cannot feel what is touching me, I'll see black spots and at other times my vision is under, interrupted by thousands and thousands of twinkling, glittering fairy lights. I'm never without symptoms. My ears ring, my legs tingle as though they've fallen asleep. My peripheral vision is blurred and my head hasn't stopped hurting since 2015. And thanks to proprioception, I always bump into things or wonder when my foot will meet that next step. In my right arm, it perpetually feels weaker. But I've learned a lot along the way. I've learned that every winter my migraine will flare and I likely will need a lidocaine and DHE tune-up at Jefferson. I learned that the more that I learn about migraine, the less scary the disease, its symptoms, and its treatments become. I've learned that a supportive community can change everything because migraine can be incredibly isolating. Previous to migraine, I had a high profile job in the fashion industry. 
and it took me over seven years to get a job that was commensurate to my pre-migraine responsibilities. I've lost countless friendships, missed weddings, and major life moments because I was too disabled to attend. And since COVID began, it's been difficult for me to maintain a job because many employers do not want to deal with reasonable accommodation requests. Whenever there are layoffs, I'm usually one of the first to go, and I'm not alone. I'm part of the 4 million who live with chronic migraine and are severely affected on a daily basis. And again, only 37% of those of us with chronic migraine are able to work full time. And what many outside of the chronic illness world don't understand is that those of us who have chronic illness have an entirely second full-time job managing their disease, fighting with insurance for medication approvals, navigating the emotional strain that isolation and pain put upon us, hours on hold with our neurologist's office, and we also mask our symptoms so that we don't risk losing our jobs. And golly, am I lucky. I work at a place that understands my disability and disease and sees it as a strength. Seriously, who gets lucky enough to be hired because they have severe migraine and spend their days talking about it on TikTok? But most with migraine are not as lucky as I am. And I'm so lucky to be connected to so many people within the migraine community, people who teach me and educate me every day, like those within the Miles for Migraine community. And that's why I continue to advocate, raise money for migraine fellowship programs and patient support programs and educate others about the disease because people with migraine deserve so much more. The burden of migraine is profound, and it's time that we change how the disease is perceived and handled by society. And advocacy groups like Miles for Migraine are catalysts to make this change. Thank you again to everyone joining us today and to do all that we can to fight migraine stigma and help others access the migraine treatment they deserve. And now I'd like to introduce